my brother's making an excellent point, man. My uh, excellent point. They said that the proverb for the so-called black man, everybody agree with it. If you want to hide something from a Negro, put it in a book, right? But you might be saying, well, in that pack of cigarettes, it ain't a book. Well, what is a book full of? What is a book full of, my brother? Words. Words, and what did they do with those words to get them on the page? Uh, print. They printed them, or they wrote them down. So if you want to hide something from a Negro, you ain't even really got to put it in the book. Just write it down. Just write it down. All the sisters, they'll pull up to this, this little spot. They'll just see the women with the smiles on their face. They see the blonde hair. They don't even look. They don't see the dye, the bleach, the perm, all the stuff that's killing them. Put it right in their scalp, go down to their skull, destroy their brain, right? But the Lord says this is a characteristic of the so-called Negroes, which are biblically called the Israelites. And that's what we come out here to show our people. The conditions that we suffer, the proverbs that they use to describe us or to manipulate us, prove that we are the people of the book. That's right. Give me Isaiah. Drop that. Give me Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3. I just got two scriptures. Two scriptures I want my brother to come back up. Bring it up. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3. How you doing my sister? Alright, we're over here talking about what are some things that's happening in our community that prove that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the biblical Jews. How do we know that we are the Israelites? I'm going to read a scripture to you right now to help you understand how we know. I'm coming back. All right, come right back. I got a scripture for you. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. Read what you got. The ox knows his owner. The Bible says that the ox knows who owns him. We're talking about a, a wild animal that got domesticated, right? Wasn't, wasn't, you know, wasn't born of a man and woman, right? An ox was born of a different breed of, of, of species. They were born of other oxen. But they understand that they got a, a master. They understand that their owner is this human being, this brother named Blue. Right? Read on. And the ass, his master's crib. The ass, my brother right here with the black in his hands. Hey, listen to me. What's your name, bro? Byron. Byron? Imaru. Imaru. The Bible says that the ass, the ass is a, a donkey. It's a working animal. The Bible says that a donkey knows his what? Master's crib! A donkey knows where its home is. You take a donkey down the street, it'll make its way back to its own home. Right. You put an ox in front of a hundred different people, the ox will go to the one person it knows that it belongs to. Right. But listen to what the Bible says about our people. Read. But Israel! But Israel! Does not know! But the Israelites, the real Jews of the Bible, what? Does not know. Our people don't know. We don't know who we belong to. We don't know where we come from. We call ourselves what? What, what, what nationality do we call ourselves? African American. We call ourselves African American. What else we call ourselves, Nick? Whatever you want to call yourself. I'm talking about our people. Some common terms that our people use to describe them. Black. Black. black, right? We say black, we say African American, blue said Negro. We call ourselves everything that the so-called white man gave us since we came here in slavery. But we don't call ourselves anything that we were referred to before we came over here. Yeah, we used to be kings. King Solomon, that was our people. King David, that was our people. King Saul, King Jehoshaphat, King Hezekiah, all these were our people. But we never refer back to these people when we refer to our own selves. Right. We always refer to African Americans. My brother right here, you said Imani, right? The term African American, where does it come from? Uh, probably came from some white people. There you go. That's exactly right. Africa comes from a white man named Leo Scipio Africanus. Hold what you got. Yes, sir. Give me Psalms 49 and 11. Leo Scipio Africanus in the Punic Wars conquered Hannibal. Now listen to me, Imani. I'm giving you some history that you can't get this history in school. You in high school? You in college? But you been to school before? They taught you history though, right? Some bullshit. Right, they taught you some bullshit. But you, we're gonna give you straight facts coming out of a book written by your ancestors. Right. This is what your ancestors said about history. Read what you got. The Book of Songs, chapter 49. Say what? Huh? Got a, copy. I'm so sorry. a copy of the Bible? Yeah, we got tons of them. Come to the school, we'll let you borrow one until you can purchase your own. 
Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 49, verse 11. Everybody listen good to what the Bible says about the people who put a term on us called African American. Blue, I want you to listen real good. Read. Their inward thoughts uh -huh. is that their houses shall continue forever. So the Bible says that the inward thoughts, the thoughts that go through the mind of the people that oppress us, that brought us over here in chains, is that their houses should continue forever. You ever seen a stamp? Go to the post office and get a stamp? You never seen a little stamp, a little square? Uh, stamp, a yeah. stamp? All right, you seen the stamps, right? They'll have the American flag up there, and it'll say, USA forever. You ever seen that? Mm -hmm. It'll say, America forever. They don't think that this place is ever going to fall. Showing you that the Bible is straight facts when it's talking about the oppressor that brought us here to America. Right. Right. And their dwelling places to all generations. Read on. They call their lands. Everybody listen real good. Read that last part again. They call their lands. The Bible says that the so-called white man calls their lands what? After their own name. After their own name. It wasn't called Africa until the white man came over there and conquered it. Jeez. The Bible is a true book. Right. It's always been a true book. It and it's never been the white man's book. That's right. Whoever said the Bible is a white man's book lied to you. Blue, they lied to you. They, they, they wanted you to look at the book and say, nah, I ain't too connected with that book. Nah, I don't really deal with that book too much. Nah, I mean, I might have read a couple passages, but nah, it ain't something that I hold near and dear to my heart. If your great-grandfather passed away, and he had a book of records of all the great things that he accomplished. You think that's something that would collect dust on the table? Do you think that's something that you would probably scan through every day, every other day? But our people don't consider that that's what the Bible is to our people. That's right. Everybody that you read about in the Bible is black. Right. right. Did you know that, my brother? Iman, did you know that the people in the Bible are black? I don't know. You did, hey, hey, Sam, did you know that the people in the Bible are black? You ain't pay no attention, all right? Further proven that the Bible is a true book. Go back to Isaiah 1 and 3. Give yes, me Job 30 and 30. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. My Move man Stink just said, I ain't never paid no attention. But look, I ain't even mad at you. Because the way the Bible got presented to us, I wouldn't have paid it no attention either. Who was holding the Bible when we was in slavery? The white man. The so-called white man. So if I ain't rocking with the white man, why would I rock with the Bible based on what was presented to us? Right. Right? But look, that was a trick bag. Hey, look, don't spark the cigarette. Not right now. Put that up. Put that up. You gotta, you gotta get this knowledge. You gotta get this wisdom right here. And all that's gonna do is defile your temple and keep you from what God wants you to become. Read what you got. The ox know of his owner. The ox know who owns him. And the ass, his master's crib. The donkey knows where. It's home is, read. But Israel does not know. But the Israelites don't know who their God is and they don't know where their real homeland is. You ask a black man, where you from? He gonna say Hampton. You ask a black man from Hampton, where you, well, no, well, where you from? He like, oh, Lincoln Park. You ask another black man, where you from? Oh, I grew up in Pine Chapel. You ask another black man, where you from? Oh, I'm from Old Town, right? You from Hampton? Mississippi. Okay, okay, so you might not be familiar with them terms, but our people don't, you familiar with those terms, right? But further proven, our people don't know where we come from. You don't come from Mississippi. You don't come from Old Town. Where you from? Well, I'm Memphis. You from, you from Memphis. We come from Jerusalem. Right. We the real Jews of the book. Right. Read on. My people do not consider. And our people don't even consider. By example, nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. 